Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. Uh, my name is John Hines. I preach for the Woodland Church of Christ here in Haynesville, Louisiana. Uh, we would like to thank you for tuning in. It's been a few weeks since we put a video video up. Uh, pardon me for that. Been gone for a few weeks and had other things going on, but it's good to be back. It's good to see you. Where we left off uh, a few weeks ago, we started talking about what must I do to be saved. And that question should be at the very center of our walk of faith as Christians. And, you know, sometimes people will accuse us when we ask that question. When, when, when we say, what must we do to be saved? Sometimes, sometimes folks will say, well, you believe in works salvation. That's simply not the case. We're not saying that we punch our own ticket. We're not saying that we earn our salvation. That's not what we're saying. Uh, we, we firmly believe, firmly believe what Scripture says, Ephesians chapter 2, we are saved by grace. It is the unmerited favor of God. It is the unmerited gift of God. What we're saying is, what must I do to be found pleasing in the Lord's eyes? What must we do so that we can hear those blessed words, well done, thou good and faithful servant? That doesn't mean that we earn our salvation. Bottom line is, is that what Scripture says, you know, the Lord, the Lord says, Scripture says, God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to be lost. He doesn't want anybody to be lost. But the bottom line is that the Lord will not save us against our will. If we do not come to Him, if we do not strive to enter the straight and narrow gate, then we will be lost. And it won't be God's fault, and it won't be Jesus' fault. It won't even be the devil's fault. It will be our fault because we have not asked ourselves the question, what must I do to be saved? So we started talking a little bit about that, and I thought we might start our study, this, our study today in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that's what we're talking about. We want to diligently seek the Lord. So this verse says, without faith it's impossible to please him. What we have to do and what we're going to do today is we're going to, we're going to deal with the question, okay, where does faith come from? You know, you, go, you look back at the Gospels and how many times did Jesus turn to his disciples and say, Oh, ye of little faith. And what he was doing was he was rebuking them. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when they had fallen asleep, when Peter, James, and John had fallen asleep, it says, O ye of little faith. It was a rebuke. And that our faith, you know, when it talks about the whole armor of God, and it talks about our shield, the shield of faith, if our shield is the size of a walnut, we're not going to be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the evil one. We need to be growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Our faith does not need to remain that big. There is a time when our faith is only that big. That's when we first become Christians. But then our faith needs to grow just as that mustard seed grows. And we need to understand that. We need to understand those things. And we, we need to see, you know, as the Lord, it, it, reminds, me of, it reminds me of when a man came to the Lord. Uh, after the Mount of Transfiguration, a man, his son, had been demon-possessed. And this man tells Jesus, this man tells Jesus that if he could, he, he was begging for compassion and mercy. Uh, and the, the Lord rebukes the man and says, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. The man responds with, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. How many times do we find ourselves in that same situation? I believe, help my unbelief. There are different levels of faith. There are different qualities of faith. That our faith may be small in the beginning, but it needs to grow. But bef before our faith, and, and we're just talking about faith here, before faith, what has to happen? Where does faith come from is what we're dealing with. You know, a lot of folks in denominations, those who believe in infant baptism, for example, sometimes they'll their doctrine is, is that the Lord instills faith miraculously in that child. Is that where faith comes from? Does, does God instill faith against our will? The answer is, of course not. If he did that, he would instill faith in everybody, and he doesn't. 
That's not how faith comes. Faith doesn't come that way. How does it come then? Come to Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10, and we hope that you're studying along with us. Romans chapter 10, we hope you're reading along with us. Romans chapter 10, at verse 13, it says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, that's what I want to do. I want to be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, it goes through and it goes into what is the process. It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? See, before I call on the name of the Lord, I got to believe. That's what Hebrews 11 says. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. And how shall they believe in him, as the verse continues, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where does faith come from? It comes from hearing the word of God. That's not hearing somebody else. It's not even hearing me blather on about it. It comes from opening up our Bibles. It comes from studying God's will. That's where faith comes from. The Holy Spirit has searched the deep things of God and has revealed them to us in the Bible. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, sometimes folks will find themselves in a position that they should not be in. Maybe they find themselves in a church that they really don't agree with. Maybe they find themselves in a denomination that, yeah, they know that it's probably not the right church. And, and I'll, you'll ask them, you'll say, what are you doing going there? And folks will say, well, that's where mom and dad have always gone. They'll say, well, that's the church that I grew up in. They'll say, well, that's what I've always done. Or maybe, they'll, maybe they really like the preacher or the priest or the pastor or whoever the guy is behind the pulpit. What we need to understand is that the man behind the pulpit, uh, what we need to understand is that preachers, and I can attest to this for sure myself, preachers are fallible. Preachers are not perfect. Preachers make mistakes. And that what we need to do is we need to look into the perfect law of liberty because that's where faith is found. Faith is not found. Faith is not passed down by flesh and blood. Faith is not passed down because, well, that's what my mom believed. That's what my dad believed. So that's what I believe. That's not the faith that God calls us to have. Faith is not found by having faith in some man standing up on a Sunday morning behind a pulpit. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come back to Mark chapter 7. Come back to Mark chapter 7. You know, as the Lord would go through his life on this earth, and as the apostles would go out after the Lord ascended, in Mark chapter 7, at verse 5, all the, of all the people that the Lord and the apostles and the other disciples would have to deal with, you know, they'd have to deal with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the different sects of the Jews and, and all the different doctrines that they had. In Mark chapter 7, at verse 5, it says, Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, they asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders and eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, He answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. That's the same thing that goes on today. People find themselves in the wrong situation and they won't change because they would rather hold to the tradition of men rather than the commandments of God. And at the same time, they'll say, well, I have faith in Jesus. We need to understand, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That we need to understand, we need to understand as it talks about, as it talks about this, we need to be careful about what we hear. And we need to understand where faith comes from. Before we believe, we need to make sure we're hearing the truth is what it amounts to. Um, of all the verses here in Mark, you might come back to Mark chapter 4. Back in Mark chapter 4 at verse 24. It says, Then he said to them, 
verse 23, starting verse 23, says, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. See, when he is rebuking the Jews and he talks about how they did not have ears to hear, they heard the truth. I mean, they could, they could understand what Jesus was saying, but they would rather, they clung to their traditions rather than the commandments of God. The problem wasn't in the physical hearing. The problem was is that their minds and their hearts were not open to what Jesus was teaching. He says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. And that's what we have to do. We have to take heed to what we hear. In Luke 8, in Luke 8 verse 18, it says to take heed how you hear. That the bottom line is, is the bottom line is that you do not obey the truth by hearing a lie. That if mom and dad, if they weren't doing what was right, you know, if they weren't doing what's right, we need to do what's right. If mom and dad were mistaken, we don't need to follow in their mistakes. And they don't want us to follow in their mistakes. We need to do what's right. We need to have the faith that the Lord calls us to have. And that faith is, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why as we're going through these studies, we have our Bibles open. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourselves to see what the Lord has revealed is the bottom line. If we're going to have the faith that Hebrews 11 calls us to have, that faith does not come by any other way than by the word of God. Doesn't matter what a preacher says, doesn't matter what a pastor says, it doesn't matter what anybody says. That the bottom line is, is that we have to listen to the word of God so that we ourselves can have the faith that the Lord calls us to have. And we're going to talk more about that faith next in the next video. But anyway, we hope you enjoyed today's study. Uh, check us out online, www.woodlandchurchofchrist.org. Check us out on Facebook. I email out a weekly bulletin. If you want to send me your email address, I can get I can email you our bulletin every week. It just gives you something else to study just so we can keep diving deeper and deeper into God's word so we can keep growing stronger and stronger in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Check us out, leave feedback. You can listen to sermons online, you can do all that stuff. Like us on Facebook. God bless you. I hope you have a good week. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.